Hi friends and welcome back to another video or welcome if it is your first time here. I am Jen, I feel like I don't really introduce myself enough. Also like low key rub my chin just in case I nudged my lipstick which yes of course I put on just for this video. But anyway, <laughs> that's besides the point. I don't usually do that but like orange, the video is about the orange tree. Um, you know, anyway, I don't need to explain that, it, it's obvious. Um, I am here to do a review for the Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I read this in July spanning across the beginning like half of August as a buddy read with Deborah from Hills of Books and yeah it was a chonky one. It was massive and even though it's been like maybe just a month since I've been in this world I still struggle to explain the general synopsis because I feel like it's such a lay layered and complex story that I don't do it justice in what it's about. So because of that I'm going to start off with just reading the synopsis and then I'll get into my thoughts and opinions of this beast. <laughs> okay so according to Goodreads it says a world divided, a queendom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakens. <laughs> The house of Berethna has ruled Innis for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sabrin the Ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction, but assassins are getting closer to her door. Eid Durian is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of Lady in Waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Eid keeps a watchful eye on Sabran, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the dark sea, Tane has trained all her life to be a dragon rider, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parley and forces of chaos arising from their sleep. Yeah, that definitely gives it more justice than what I would have tried to stumble and stutter out. So it is epic. We're following so many different threads of perspectives from across like what I feel like continents and just the world in general. And oh my God, it's so rich in just the lore and history and geography of, this, of the whole landscape. It is intense, it is a behemoth as you can see it is just well and truly a beast of a book and the thing that I liked about it the most is that it is a standalone because I feel like although it's a big chunky book and I feel like it could have been a bit shorter I like the fact that it is wrapped up and that's it like it, I've had enough time with these characters it feels like it could have been like a duology or something if it was split in half but I don't have like a lot of trilogies that I take forever to finish with this it's just one and done you know what I mean anyway um, I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars um, this was a journey <laughs> as I feel like I've made my point you know many a times in this first like three minutes of this video it was a journey um, at times it was very long draining harrowing but it always left me excited and definitely intrigued to find out more and kind of see the threads of each individual plots eventually connect, link up, characters meet, that sort of thing and kind of see the bigger picture that was um, being sort of hinted and lured to. Once I got into the flow of it, I did find the writing style particularly easy to get into and sort of digest. Um, this is the first book that I've read from Samantha Shannon. I've not really been interested in picking up her bone season books um they just they've never caught my attention but this one i found like you know you know easy enough to get into after a good while being immersed in the world a bit overwhelming because we had so many different perspectives and as i said earlier it's split across different countries and um there's lots of different political intrigue religious aspects um characters like who's who like there was a lot to grasp and because you are following different areas and locations they've all got their own setup which in turn is very believable but was a lot to kind of take in you know especially you know being so new into the world it was just a lot to kind of try and sift through it did take me about 250 300 pages to really feel like some idea of what was going on and when you think about that, you know, that could be a whole book in itself. So I know it's it's usually of an average size read. It takes me about 50 pages to get into a book, sometimes 100 if it's a bit more slow going. But yeah, that it 
I had to really <laughs> kind of pay attention. But I did end up falling back in my daily chapters that I was reading for part of the buddy read. But I think both me and Deborah ended up being behind <laughs> of our own buddy read. But it was nice because I felt like with something like this, the sheer size of it and the sheer content that it holds, taking it that little bit slower really helped to try and digest and see things and link things and understand what was happening um i allowed myself the time to go over bits that were a bit confusing like i still was confused for some things that just wouldn't go in but i think not kind of pushing myself and trying to rush to meet that daily goal having that kind of push to the side helped me to enjoy it a bit more and take my time you know although it was very dense and intricate and as i say i feel like stuff did go over my head i did love the extent of the history and the politics and the relationships between characters and how well that was built up and how detailed that was it just really added to this believability of the world building and i just felt like it just added some richness some spice and personality and flavor and color to the characters within this book some of my big struggles were the general placing of events. I feel like, for example, if you went from one perspective in a different area to another and they sort of somewhat picked off where the last perspective ended, but definitely time had passed, I couldn't kind of clarify in my mind how much time had passed. And then also referring to events that had already happened prior to this story beginning with us now i was losing track of and i did find around 400 pages into this book i realized that there was more content at the back like timelines and stuff i feel like they should put those things at the front because it's such a like a scare that you're going to spoil yourself for something when you flick to the back and i don't naturally gravitate to looking towards the back anyway um so yeah i mean that probably would have helped if i had have realized that sooner but also there was the worry of reading like the glossary was quite extensive and there was that worry when i realized it was there that i was going to spoil myself because it had a lot of details of this is so and so house of blah 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 connected to this and this and we might not have met that character yet you know so i kept pushing it off and pushing it off and kind of just pushing through the confused haze that i had at times but i mean that was just my particular reading experience you might find it easier to read the glossary and the timeline alongside i was just worried that things would be spoiled and also it's not natural for me to flick to the back even though i know every book probably has it at the back i just it's in my head i don't think mm, let me flick to the back you know I, I just don't do that and as i mentioned briefly at the beginning i also found this just to be too long i feel like there's quite a lot of content in here that maybe could have been edited out um at times i feel like it was a bit detail heavy that it felt a little bit like word vomity and kind of just dense in the fact that this is this was not going in like it there was so much to try and grasp that some of it was just slipping through the cracks you know so i feel like some detail although amazing it was all thought about and collected and put together i do feel like some of it could have been done with just being edited out a smidge just to i don't know some things just didn't feel as necessary as other things oh my gosh all this talking i'm so thirsty Oh, good cup of tea. I do say so myself. <laughs> you can see my lovely lipstick mark on the cup there. Characters, I really got on with pretty much all of them, I think. I actually had a favourite who was a minor character, Margaret. I really liked her and I kind of wish we had more of her. She was just, I don't know, she's, you know you just get those characters sometimes you just really enjoy, you just get attached to. And I feel like she was one of them for me and I can't exactly place it but i just i really liked her there was the main romance in here that i i did enjoy for the most part but i feel like and if you've read this let me know if you agree or disagree or what your thoughts are but their first intimate scene i felt like was way too soon i felt like it came at a time where one of the characters was really vulnerable and in a physical and mental state that probably wasn't the best time to initiate intimate contact i feel like maybe she was perhaps seeking comfort and i feel like that should have been reciprocated to her rather than okay she wants sex let's have sex like i feel like the other participant in this uh, partnership should have maybe looked at it at a different angle and been like mm, like is she really in the state to do this and want it and not feel regret afterwards and 
am I willing as a person to do this with her and not feel strange like this isn't the right time to me that's how I felt I don't know if you know what I mean um but yeah I just felt like it was not the right time but I did definitely ship the relationship you know and just wrapping this up now with the ending I feel like it was definitely you know satisfactory but I think I would have gotten more closure and more of like a final just final <laughs> done um if we had got a little bit more of an instant aftermath I feel like that would have made me feel more settled um, and comfortable with it being over um, but I did like the direction of everything overall um, it was sound pretty complex epic standalone fantasy I'm glad to have finally read this so let me know if you've read The Priory of the Orange Tree and what you thought about it and also if you've read Samantha Shannon's other um, series The Bone season series i think that's still ongoing isn't it it's been going on for i want to say since 2012 maybe even longer i don't really know um let me know if it's worth a read because as i say that never really stood out to me as something that piqued my interest um but i might be willing to give it a go now that i've you know had an idea of um the fact that i enjoy her writing so yeah that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i shall speak to you in another video soon bye